Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you doing? Very good. I'm excited to talk to you. I know that this uh, The Exorcist Believer was your really your first uh, time working on a horror film. How was that for you? That was so fun. I can't tell you. I I uh, peeking behind the curtains, but you know, it's behind the curtains with the master of horror, Jason Blum, and with a fantastic director who I've known forever, David Gordon Green, and you know, and Leslie Odom Jr., who's just such a performer and such a great guy. It was so much fun, and I can't wait to do it again. So what, so what were some maybe the expectations you had versus the reality uh, once you once you got to peek behind the scenes? I'm really curious of, of your experience. Well, I saw The Exorcist, the original Exorcist, when I was 12 years old in theaters uh, 50 years ago. Oh. And uh, and I'd read the book before I saw the movie. I'm still traumatized, but I loved how smart that movie was. Um, and and it never sort of left me. So and I hadn't seen any of the other Exorcist films because I'm not typically I don't make horror films and I really I don't see them unless they're super smart. Or they're black or brown people, to be honest, you know what I mean? And um, so. Peeking behind the scenes was really good because um, I'm not scared. <laughs> um, and and I realized that genre is such a powerful tool, right? Mm -hmm. Because Leslie Odom Jr. is starting a movie that's number one around the world. And that is pretty spectacular. So, yeah, what what is it what is it like to be part of now? You know the genre that has grown so much with what we've seen, especially from one like uh, like the us and and we've seen other for Candyman's another one uh, where so a lot a lot of there's a lot of conversations that can be made from from the way that you take some uh, some culturally some cultural things and put them into the genre to have a better conversation. Look. There have been so many years where the black eye was the first to die, right? And we were way past that. Um, and seeing us in, in I mean, Jordan Peele really, really, I think, deserves a lot of credit for Get Out, right? Which really broke open this notion that um, a very commercial worldwide release with black folks in horror was um you know it could make money um and jason obviously was a part of that as well so i think it's brilliant i want to do another horror film i love that we can make scare everybody to death and also have a message about a black single father who is a great guy who will do anything to save his daughter and about a community that comes together black white latin a you know evangelical catholic hoodoo all of that can come together and i think it's a really special message especially for the times that we live in where people are so diametrically opposed the message is it takes a village it takes a village to come together to defeat evil and for me who uh, as a filmmaker who um really wants to um uh, rewrite the narrative about stereotypes about brown and black people and women and other underrepresented groups it's a win-win yeah that that's very very well said um when it comes to the exorcist believer you, the, you we've talked a lot about it being your first I mean, the, when I when I thought about it, I was like, "Ooh, that's a that's a tough one," because it was so it was such a game changer at the time it came out, nineteen seventy three. Uh, what were what were some of what are the, some of the things that you wanted to do going forward with maybe some of the things that you said that traumatized you when when you watched it that, we, that you wanted to make sure that this is what we need to have. This is what I hope it has. You know, working with with the team. Yeah, I mean, look, Manny, it's um, there are huge shoes to fill. Right. I mean, The Exorcist is the creme de la creme of horror movies. It stood the test of time for 50 years. I think for David, he just wanted to make sure that we were approaching this 
new beginning with the same reverence and the same um, excellence that the first movie, you know, planted the flag in, in the genre horror. And I think he did it. I think he did it because I think it is smart. It's dreadful. It's scary. It's frightening. But at the same time, there's um, there's so many new aspects that make it contemporary, right? There's so, like I was saying, the community, the Black lead, um, our girls were fantastic. These young actors who, you know, just had a ball while raising hell. Um, so it has been um, really eye-opening for me as a filmmaker to realize that there's another genre where we can be seen and heard. You, you said you want to continue and work on another horror film in the future. What are some of the things that you take away from this project that you're like, oh, I want to try this, or maybe you want to try to elevate and do a little differently? Wow, that's interesting. I mean, I learned so much about the behind the scenes of horror on this film and the language of horror. So I'm still a student. I'm still like, you know, learning what's the best way to create that sense of dread. What's the best way to um, put your characters in a situation that your audience will be, you know, climbing the walls to try to figure out how to get out of it. Um, so I am looking forward to, I'm actually going to do another movie with, with Jason, uh, that is a horror movie that is, um, that is again, really smart, really, really psychological, but completely horrifying. So I'm going to learn more in the next movie and, um, you know, just kind of stack my chips from there. Well, we look we look forward to hearing about it, of course. Um, I have one of the other questions, and wow, it just absolutely set my mind uh, that I wanted to ask you. Oh, uh, why is horror such such a a popular force nowadays? I mean, we, we've seen the last few years the way that it's been able to dominate box offices, not only on its opening weekend, but then they have legs for weeks and weeks to come. We saw what The Nun did just recently. Uh, yeah. You guys just took the number one, of course. And then uh, like last year, Smile came out of nowhere. It was dominated Megan. by box yeah. offices. You know Megan, what? Barbarian. I'll tell you, Go my ahead. theory is that we live in some really horrific times. And how do you process that? One way is to go in a dark room with strangers and feel the fear, feel the fright, feel the, 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 the terror and then walk out. You know what I mean? Like it is, it remember in, in, in the forties in the wartime, there were musicals because people were like, I can't deal with, you know, what's going on. Let's sing and dance. It's kind of the same thing. Like this coming together, this community where we can all admit how frightened we are. And I think that's why it's so popular. Plus, it's it's so fun to watch a horror film in theaters. I I know that um, we discussed it with uh, with my partner and I. Should we take our daughter to see this? Because we've we've introduced her to horror very well. She's very mature for her age. How old is she? And, and uh, she's twelve. Okay. Well, that's how old I was. Um, so. <laughs> she's yeah. No, it's a we you know it's it's been gradual. There's certain things that she doesn't get to see, of course. But the final decision was. No, she can't because it's a very different experience at home than it is in the theater. Um, why should people go out to see this in theaters? Well, again, what a beautiful communal experience to be in the room, in the dark room with strangers. And the person next to you who you don't know is screaming <laughs> at the exact same time you are, you know, that feeling of being together, especially because we Zoom all the time. We're never in the same room with people. The theater is the one place that is still the sanctified place of communal emotions, whether you're laughing, you're crying, you're screaming your eyes out. And I think something about that is um, affects your 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 feelings. Like you're feeling I'm 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 in it with everybody else. And I think that is how you get through life, you know, which is to rely on the people closest to you and uh, to be part of something larger than yourself. Yeah, you find out you don't really have many, uh, many judgments once you're in a room and you want to be close to other people. I personally, I'm a squirmer and I uh, stress eat while I'm in, <laughs> while I'm at horror films. Uh, Stephanie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. it's, it's such an, uh, such a pleasure to, to, to pick your brain and, and to find out your experience. I look forward to, uh, to talking to you on the next one. Yeah, everybody come out for, ha for Halloween and Friday the 13th. It's coming up.
such a great movie to watch on the Friday the 13th. Of course. <laughs>